Well, a very good afternoon from Phuket and today is the 24th of March. Over the last 24 hours, we've seen a lot of significant changes here in Thailand, which I'm going to run through with you in a moment. But first, yesterday evening, we, we had some bad news for ourselves. The government have been compiling a list over the last few days of businesses and business types that they want to close. Up until yesterday, our business type hadn't been added to that list, but late yesterday evening, our business type was added to the list, which meant yesterday was our last day of trading. They have said that it's till the end of the month and then they're gonna review it, but I can't honestly see us being allowed to open again for some time. I don't know, I may be wrong, I'm hoping I am, because of course, with the closure of our business, that means our income is finished now. So we've gotta go now for X amount of time with the amount of money we currently have in the bank. So. Of course, I'm a little bit concerned because we can't open our business, which means we can't earn any money. There are many, many people over here in the same situation, so I know I'm not alone. So a little bit of a worrying development there. However, there are lots of developments happening now in Thailand. I've got a list just in front of me here because of so many things that's been happening over here. Now, the government have said that all restaurants have to close for food inside the restaurant. The restaurant can only do takeaway food or delivery food, which came into force yesterday. But I have seen today, I have been out, I've had to do a little bit of shopping. I have seen today um, that I don't feel that, that that idea is a great idea because even with the restaurants only doing takeaway food, I've seen large numbers of people, five, 10 people, queuing up at restaurants waiting for food to be cooked. So obviously they're congregating together, which is contradictory to the advice the government are saying, we need to distance ourselves, stay apart. But of course, some people are not doing that. They're not taking the, the, the advice seriously enough. I've just come past a local, in fact, I've just come past, past two local markets, which were full. I have to say that the, these are food markets. Food markets are allowed to stay open and Shadow's just coming over to see what I'm doing. These food markets are by law allowed to stay open, but of course people are going there in large numbers at the same time, which is really not what they need to be doing. Because of course, if one person has the virus, then they're gonna be spreading it to everybody else in close proximity. I have not seen a lot of people taking precautionary measures. I now wear a mask whenever I go out. Now I know there's controversy over the masks as regards of how effective they are. But if I have the virus, which I'm not saying I have, I don't know, but if I do, then it's gonna stop me from spreading it to somebody else. Obviously, I've not had a test or anything. I don't feel ill or anything like that. But obviously, I wanna take precautions. Um, we've got hand cleaner with us, we've got tissue wipes, all the types of things that they advise you to do, so we're taking all the necessary precautions. And if everybody did the same, this would definitely help reduce the spread of the virus. But of course, not everybody is doing these precautions. Some people are obviously thinking they're either immune to it or they're not gonna catch it. And this sort of attitude is what's caused the problem that we've got now. The government have also said in, in Phuket, the local government have been giving handouts of food, which is a great idea to help people in this, this time of need, because of course, lots of businesses are closing. A lot of people over in Thailand live very much day to day. So they sell stuff one day to make a little bit of money to pay for the next day, etc., etc. And of course, if they've had to close their business, then they don't have a lot of money. So obviously these government handouts of free food is gonna be welcome and helped. But unfortunately, again, it's causing queues. I've come past where they were doing it. They're doing it in my local area. I've come past that area and there was large queues there and there were people standing right next to each other congregating. And we're talking about lots of people. So again, I've said to Nat, this is just not a great idea. It's, I, I can understand what they're trying to do, but it, it, it just, it's not gonna work that way. It's not gonna be helpful. If one person in IQ has the virus, then of course it's liable to spread to other people. So not a great start. Now we have had an announcement over the TV, the national TV by the prime minister he has announced a state of an emergency over here in Thailand. And there are, um, 
a rift of uh, new measures coming in over the next few days. We don't know what they all are, but I'm sure things are going to get a lot more difficult over the next 48 hours. That's for sure. As it comes down and we know exactly what's going on, uh, at the moment it's just said that they, they're going to release all the details over the next 48 hours. So we will know all the necessary measures that people have to take or will be made to take. I have noticed that they have uh, now security officers with the power to close down media where they feel necessary. So now is the time if people are out there posting fake news or posts that are not genuine, and I'm seeing a lot of it, I'll be honest with you, you need to think very carefully about what you're posting now. Make sure you're posting accurate information, not scaremongering people, because this is no good to anybody. It's only going to make the situation worse. I saw a post on Facebook today where somebody had reposted a post. It wasn't accurate in the first place. It wasn't the whole story. They'd said that uh, a Russian guy and his son had flew out of Bangkok to Kuala Lumpur and then flown back from Kuala Lumpur to Bangkok and wouldn't be allowed back in even though they had a medical certificate and the necessary insurance but it turned out the full story was totally well not totally different but very different to the way it had been displayed on social media the actual story was the guy and his son had flown out to Kuala Lumpur but hadn't been allowed of course they stamped out in Bangkok out of Thailand so once you do that then you have to stamp in in another country stamp out of that country to come back again so when they flew to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia is closed to all visitors, so they wasn't allowed to pass through immigration, gain the entry and exit stamp like you're supposed to do. Instead, they got stuck in the transit lounge, ended up flying back to Thailand without an entry or exit stamp from Malaysia. And of course, the Thai government would not allow them to enter into Thailand because of course, even though they've exited Thailand, they haven't entered another country which they need to do to be able to come back in with a visa into Thailand. They were flown back to Kuala Lumpur and they were stuck in the transit lounge sleeping on the floor. So it made it look like the Thai government were being very harsh with them because they, people had made out that the, why wasn't the Thai government accepting the medical certificate, the insurance certificate, etc, etc. And that wasn't simply the case. The, the case is if you leave Thailand, you stamp out, you need to stamp into another country and then obviously exit that country with a stamp which they didn't do, and that's why they wasn't allowed in. It had got nothing to do with the medical certificate. It had got nothing to do with the insurance. But of course, the original story didn't say all those details. And this only leads to panic. I'm watching all the websites, media channels now, trying to work out what's genuine and what's fake. There has been people come, have been allowed to come into Thailand with all the necessary documents. One guy has flown into Phuket. I think it was either today or yesterday. He had all the necessary paperwork. He had all the medical certificates and he was allowed to come into the country as the government have stated. I try to be as accurate as I can, but I'm only going on the information that's out there. And some of it's not accurate. So if I read the wrong information, misunderstand it or whatever the case may be, I then can end up giving misinformation, which I don't want to do. So please bear in mind, if you have a circumstance, don't be checking on Facebook, asking people's opinions, because these are people's opinions that possibly don't know what's going on. And you're going to get misinformation. You're going to get fake information. It's not going to be correct. And then this is going to cause you more and more problems. So I strongly recommend now no traveling to Thailand unless it's absolutely necessary because the country is going into a state of emergency. If you do have to travel out here, you need to be 100% sure you have the correct documentation and you are going to be able to enter the country or you could find yourself in a similar position where you are turned away at the border. So this is something that you need to consider long and hard before doing. Now, personally, I've had a little bit of good news today, which I'm really, really relieved about. And as you know from my vlog yesterday, the situation then was I couldn't obtain that ex an extension on an extension without a letter from the embassy. And at that time, the embassies were refusing to give that letter out. Now, the British embassy, I'm not talking about all embassies. I'm clearly talking about the UK, the British Embassy in Bangkok, they are prepared to give British citizens that are stuck here in Thailand, whether they're on a, a tourist visa, 
uh, a work visa, uh, immigration B visa, O visa, whatever the visa, it says, clearly says all types of visa, they are willing to give you a letter so you will be able to get an extension. So that's sort of helped and relieved a little bit of stress and panic because I was starting to worry that if this situation went on, that obviously in 60 days, well, a little bit longer than 60 days, I was going to have a serious problem and possibly have to leave Thailand, which of course I don't want to do because my life is here. This is where I live. This is where my family is. And this is where my home is. I don't have nothing in the UK. So a little bit of good news for me. We've had to close the business on one hand, so not so great, but at least I can make an extension. So that's great. Now I'm going to quickly look down at this um, and see what I need to cover. So yes, I've done, I've done all that. Now, as regards numbers, we have had nine more cases today in Phuket. That brings the total to 26 now in Phuket. Um, over the whole country, we have had 106 new cases and there is now four deaths in Thailand. So that has jumped from yesterday's one to four. So that's an increase of three. So a little bit worrying there. And there has been now cases across 47 provinces out of the 76 provinces in Thailand. Of course, I mentioned yesterday there was a mass exit over the last few days from Bangkok. Of course, people leaving Bangkok to go to their own provinces, which now has not really been an ideal situation. The government are, of course, now acting on this. Um, but again, they need... Governments need to take action quickly and I know it's very difficult for some governments to do that because of the, the way of life in that particular country and it's difficult to control and police also but the government now are taking some action as regards that and will be over the next day, few days. So that's how we stand at the moment. Now I've quickly come down to the beach expecting it to be quiet to be honest because I want to get away from crowds. At the moment we are able to move around but as I say I think that will start to come into effect in the next couple of days where we have restrictions on movement. At the moment, uh, I went out this morning to do a little bit of shopping with, with Nat uh, and Ply to get what we need in, just in case we can't go out. I haven't gone mad now. Fortunately, over here, the supermarkets are very, very well stocked. Nobody's panicking, panic buying like they are in other parts of the world. Everybody's being sensible at the moment, which is great to see. Lots of precautions being taken in the supermarkets. There's hand gels everywhere. A big C was giving out masks today, which was nice to see. They wasn't free, but they wasn't expensive. You could get four masks for 10 baht, but they were limiting it to four masks per person. And you had to show either your ID card, or in my case, I've got a Thai driving license. And that would be, that would allow me, because obviously it shows that I'm living here, would allow me to get the masks. So I had four masks for 10 baht because we have had cases of people profiteering over here of course taking advantage of the situation i've even spoken to nat about it because she's been on facebook buying hand gels at a higher price and i've said look you know whilst we need some of this stuff we need to be i'm not paying 10 times what it would normally be and there are people charging that unfortunately that's the way of the world and i think it's everywhere people are trying to make a profit out of it not ideal and of course these people really the government have said if they catch people selling things for heightened prices and they are doing it i have seen coverage on the news where they're, they're confiscating large amounts of masks uh, hand gels and things like that that people are hoarding or buying up to sell for a large profit they are trying to do the best but of course this is a big country and it's hard to police the whole country. It's going to be very hard to lock everything down because of course you, you need the cooperation of people and if people are not willing to cooperate, it becomes very difficult. At the moment from what I've seen, day-to-day -day life here hasn't really changed that much. People are not taking it seriously enough. Now I know I ha have quite a few Thai subscribers and I would say to everybody that subscribes to my channel, if you are in Thailand at the moment, you need to take this situation very, very seriously. Try to do as much as you can to prevent the spread. Take the necessary precautions if you have to go out, then try to curb the spread as much as possible. I shan't be coming out as much. I'm taking the opportunity. We've brought Shadow the dog down here because obviously she needs some exercise. The parks have been closed. 
lots and lots of businesses now have been closed. Gyms have closed, all the spas have closed. As I've mentioned before, entertainment venues, bars have closed. Lots and lots of shops, souvenir shops, all types of shops. However, I will say one thing. I've just come through Cocad and seen two shops that should be closed open. So not everybody again is heeding the warning, but the government have give out very, very stern warnings. People that break the law on this and do not comply with this order are looking at prison sentences up to one year, a fine up to 100,000 baht or even both in extreme cases. So again, it's in the best interest of all people to take heed of these warnings the government are giving us to do as they ask because if you don't then you could land yourself into a lot of trouble so hopefully i'm going to bring you a vlog tomorrow update you again on the situation as it changes i'm sure it's going to change we're going to have a, a, a rift of new measures coming out over the next 24 to 48 hours. So I'm going to do my very best to keep you all updated on current events taking place here in Thailand as they happen over the next coming weeks. I don't know how long the situation is going to go on. I really hope it doesn't go on too long but of course I am aware of the current situation in the rest of the world and I am aware of how long it's taking there. So I'm preparing myself for the long haul. Hopefully things are not going to get too bad here. We can hope and pray that that is the situation that's going to happen here in Thailand. I certainly hope so. Fingers crossed with that. So from me here in Thailand, I wish everybody well and I would like to take an opportunity to thank everybody in the comments on yesterday's video for all the wishes, the well wishes, etc. to myself and my family. Thank you very much and the same applies to yourselves and your own families. Be careful and stay safe.